We have heard over and over again that working with students with different abilities and learning styles is one of the most enriching and challenging experiences of a professor's career. And specifically when working with blind and visually impaired students, it's incredibly important to work closely with the Disability Resource Center. At PSU, we recognize that our ethical and legal responsibilities are one and the same. But much more than that, we have a deep commitment to universal access and design and consider that a core pillar of inclusive excellence. PSU is applying an equity lens to our strategic plan. It calls for the use of universal design and appropriate accommodations to the academic experiences our students have in order to ensure an equitable and inclusive learning environment for all. As you may know, Portland State's motto is let knowledge serve the city. We can only make that real when we infuse accessibility into all aspects of the educational experience. Consider it an adventure, not a challenge necessarily, because when you think challenge, you automatically think all of the work that you have to put into it. And if you just think of it like, oh, this is an interesting adventure, let's figure it out. It's a lot more fun for both of us. We know that professors want the best outcomes for all their students. Unfortunately, blind students can sometimes be disempowered in the classroom. And it's hard because, you know, I work very hard and I try very hard to be a good student. And I, I am very passionate about my education and what I'm doing. And when something is inaccessible, I know they don't mean it to be any sort of offense, but I feel like they just completely forgot about it. I, I just like to participate in class and because I don't have full information, I can't participate in class, which really demoralizes me and frustrates me. And it makes you feel kind of isolated too, because you want to be included and you want to be a part of it, and you don't want to be, you know, oh, that blind chick. You, you just want to be a student. You know, if there's something on the overhead or they're writing on the whiteboard or something, don't just assume that everyone can see it. And I know they're not doing this intentionally, but sometimes they refer to diagrams a lot and they say, oh yeah, so according to this diagram right here, I don't know what, is it a pie graph? Is it a bar graph? Just be as descriptive as possible. A lot of professors don't think about it, but there is the board writing things down and they're like, oh, this and this refers to that. And I'm like, I don't know what this or that is. So mm -hmm. I'm assuming you wrote something on the board. But if they just say, you know, if A and B, which are blue and purple, refer to C, which is yellow, it makes a lot more sense to me. And it includes me, and it's something really simple that we could do. Does this mean that professors should avoid using visual aids, diagrams, and pictures in their lectures? Of course not. It just means that they may want to include some descriptions and auditory cues as well. Here are some ideas. Whenever you use a whiteboard, be sure to say everything out loud as you're writing. If there's an image, describe it in a few words. If you use a graph, describe the graph and be sure to include the titles of both the X and Y axes in your description. And remember, call on students by name or ask them to identify themselves when speaking, especially at the beginning of the course. Not only does this help the blind student, but it helps your whole class get to know each other better. If anybody who's visually impaired is trying to participate and you call on them, use their name. Don't just point and say yes, <laughs> because that, that, I'm going to stand there with my hand in the air for 10 minutes until you tell me that you're trying to talk to me. Sometimes, certain classroom activities cannot be made fully accessible. In those cases, we provide one-on-one -on -one support using classroom assistance. One thing that is just horribly offensive and embarrassing is when professor talks to the classroom assistant in a way similar like they should be talking to me. The role of a classroom assistant is to facilitate participation in the most independent way possible. They may describe visual material, perform manual tasks, or act as a reader scribe. A classroom assistant does not instruct, give hints, 
answer questions about course content, answer questions on behalf of the student, or become a full participant in the classroom. Students who are blind access electronic materials the same way that sighted people do. They use a computer. They'll use a regular keyboard or a refreshable braille display, while screen reading software reads everything on the screen out loud to them. So problems arise when documents are posted as scans or images that can't be read out loud by screen reading software. If I don't have my book in a format that I can use, I will not be able to do it in my classes. The good news is that the DRC takes care of making these things accessible for you. We only ask three things from you. Number one, share a syllabus and textbook reading schedule with the DRC at least two weeks before the start of the term. Number two, email us the names of any software programs you plan to use or any websites to which you will be referring students. The DRC will test these programs and websites with screen reading software to determine whether or not we'll need to find an accessible alternative. Number three, share all supplemental reading materials with the DRC at least three business days before your planned distribution, posting, or show date. This might include PowerPoints, handouts, online articles, etc. Please do what the DRC says, you know, <laughs> submit your paper that you need to do three days ahead of time. I know it's extra work for you guys as professors, but it would really help me a lot. It can just be really difficult sometimes if, you know, I have something due Monday morning at 8 o'clock and I don't have access to it until Friday at 6 p.m. and, you know, I have performances all weekend. Believe it or not, I am like every other student, so every once in a while I will wait until Wednesday or Thursday to do the assignments that are due on Sunday. And I have that right. In a sense, it was my own fault for waiting, but at the same time, it should have been accessible so that I could wait. I remember that when I first took my first exam, it was difficult for me, but now, I mean, I got some training here, and now I do most of my exam by myself on the computer. Some professors may choose to be creative in how they assess blind students. Rather than a typical written exam, consider an oral exam or alternate means of assessment. This creativity may also extend to other classroom activities. When assigning homework or projects, be sure to consider whether or not a student who is blind can reasonably perform the activity. For example, asking a student to draw a diagram of a cell, instead, you could ask a blind student to describe the cell and its structures to you orally. For some structural diagrams and graphs, we may create a tactile graphic that the student can access by touch. We in the Disability Resource Center recognize faculty as our biggest and best partners on campus. We're very excited to work together with them as the subject matter experts to create dynamic, engaging, and accessible education for all students. I would say don't be nervous when you hear that you will have a student who is visually impaired in your class. If we work together, we will figure everything out. Um, give me an opportunity to, you know, show what I know. I made it this far, so um, I need you guys to just uh, give me that support. I would just say, you know, just everybody be flexible. It's, you know, it's going to take trial and error, but it will eventually work out.